Now, there are only as many models of personality types as there are people who make models. <laughs> That's not a small number. There are some that are more popular out there. Um, and uh, by and large, by and large, these um, types and typologies and assessment tools and all of those tests, you know, by and large, um, they can be really helpful. They can be useful. I think one of the most useful um, applications of these is when people sit down, and it may be in a marriage, it may be in a team, and they begin to understand their type and they understand someone else's type, then they understand that those differences are not necessarily malicious. They're not necessarily bad or that person's not evil or whatever. Uh, they just approach life and the universe and see it and react to it and respond to it and integrate it, metabolize it or run from it or embrace it or fight it differently than someone else. Well, that now, oh, I understand why you do that now, because that's kind of your, quote, type. Um, those conversations can be very helpful. One of the helpful things about it is I think it gets people observing themselves. Now you go into, and we're going to do that on one of the thoughts of the day, uh, the importance of your self-observing uh, capacities and abilities and capabilities. You know, for a hundred years, I guess, or more, you know, the psychoanalysts have been talking about the observing ego. Ego means I, and that's the I that sits above the I. And that's our ability of self-awareness and monitor what we're feeling and doing, our feelings and actions and impulses and fears and all that kind of stuff. The more self-observation we have, the greater capacity of the human in totality to be able to kind of order your behavior and feelings and regulate your behavior and feelings. It's very important to be able to get in touch and look at and observe and embrace and all of that, what you're feeling. Very, very important. So one of the good things about these personality types is that people start to look at themselves. And that's a great thing. The first one is looking at yourself. The second one is being able to discuss that with somebody else. The third one is being able to understand somebody else. And so, you know, another one that I think is important in teams is um, if you take something as simple as as detail orientation versus somebody's big picture, um, and you look at a group and uh, all you have on that team is very detail-oriented people, then, uh, yeah, everything's going to be clean and tidy but nobody's going to know what we're really doing around here or where we're going. What happened to the big picture? You know, what happened to the strategy and all that kind of stuff. On the other hand, if you have all big picture people, nobody that's looking at the details, then there probably won't ever be a meeting because nobody knows what time it is or what day it is. So that's kind of, um, it's a good thing in a lot of ways. There's a lot of good applications of this stuff. You know, and you got the, the Myers Briggs type, that is a very, very popular one. You got the big five personalities, you have all the old psychoanalytic categories, you've got the Viro B, and you've got, you know, the TJTA, and there's just a gazillion of these. Um, so that's great, guys. Get yours, look at it, take a bunch of them, learn all about yourself as you can. Now, having said that, I want to get to the big problem with this is that a lot of people will take these and they will see themselves in sort of a fixed, um, unchangeable way. And they'll say, well, I'm just this or I'm just that. That's problem number one. And we'll get to that why that's a problem in a moment. Problem number two is where did that come from? Why am I like that? The that is what 
the thing might show, but is that a good thing or is that a not so good thing? And then I have that high of a imbalance with the polarity of that particular trait. In other words, a lot of times we can be a certain way in part, not because that's how we were designed, but in part because that's our way of handling conflict or trauma or woundedness or all sorts of other things. So <clears throat> it's very important to look at ourselves, but the and we can't deal with all of the problems in the application of this in one setting. But I just want to get to one of them. And that is that dynamic. Sometimes people will say, I'm just a whatever. And so that's just who I am. And you just got accepted. And, and you know, that's not going to change. And you should glory in my strengths and relish in who I am and love me like I am and all of that. And then they will just kind of also um, almost use it as an, or do use it as an excuse sometimes to have to listen to the ways that their particular living out of their type is not a great way of living it out because it might be hurting somebody else. So <clears throat> I'm just going to use one example of this. Now, um, a lot of, and the reason I use this is so many of you are, um, you know, familiar with, um, for example, the Myers-Briggs, the big five is another one that gets a lot of airplay today, but let's just look at the Myers-Briggs for a second. And l listen, I'm not saying anything negative about the Myers-Briggs at all. I think it's very helpful to, to some people in the ways I've described. But what it does, if you don't know it, is, you know, there's four um, scales, really, that go into the type. And, and the first one is introversion, versus extroversion, okay? So you have an I or an E, and there's a scale on that. Um, and the next one is sense, sensations, yeah, sensation versus <clears throat> uh, um, being intuitive. So you're uh, an S or an N, I think I got that right. The next one is thinking and feeling. Sensing versus intu intuiting and sensing uh, and feeling and thinking. And then the last one is the J, which is judging versus, you know, perceiving. And the these types um, are basically um, ways of looking at how you function in in these different, you know, areas of, of human function, just like the thinking and feeling one for a second. Um, the, the, the thinking person is going to kind of obviously communicate with thought, think about things in thought, analyze situation and thought, and most of what you're going to get them from them is kind of how they, how they think about stuff. And the more feeling person experiences life and processes life and communicates, you know, through feelings. And and the problem is that if somebody is just all thinking and has no feelings, that's not an integrated, holistic way to go through life. But if somebody is just a lot of feeling and they never have thoughts, about those feelings or thoughts that may be in some way adding to those feelings or thoughts that may be keeping them unconscious thoughts about and belief systems that keep them stuck in those feelings, then um, it's kind of a limited view of being human because the reality is it's very interesting. A lot of people don't, don't think about this, that the, that personality type structure, the Myers-Briggs, um, came from Jungian psychology, where Carl Jung um, had all of those polarities. And, and what he talked about was the, the imbalanced person had not integrated the opposite polarity of themselves. In other words, if you're just a thinker, it would 
be good for you to also get in touch with your feelings. If you're just a feeler, it would be also good to be thinking about those feelings a little bit and thinking about life. And if you're um, just a high introvert, that that can turn into, if it's enabled by you and interpreted that, excuse me, that way by you, that can turn into not having a lot of people in your life, right? Or if you're totally an extrovert, you get all your energy from people, that's what you hear, then sometimes that can be really, really kind of shallow and absent of a lot of complexity and kind of out of touch with yourself because there's no solitude and getting off to yourself and kind of, you know, being by yourself. So the first problem is when we find out what we are, um, let's not just use that as an excuse for what we lack. If you're, and, and, and by the way, I, there is, there is, and this is really difficult to get to, but there is, you know, there's a case to be made for certain wiring and people come into the world wired differently. And that's just, it is. I mean, if you don't believe it, go to, you know, go to a, the obstetrics war, the hospital where they have the little aquarium, you know, all the babies are born and they're putting there and they're in little burritos sitting in the, in the little cribs. And um, you just go look at them and you can tell which ones are kind of the, the uh, you know, they're just sort of, Good with the world, bye, bye, bye. And, you know, they're just happy from day one. And then you got the one next to them. It's like, <laughs> and they're, I, I always say <laughs> those are the future attorneys because they're already, you know, litigating. And, you know, there's different temperaments and there's different stuff that happens in people's lives that adds to that wiring or, or you know, whatever it is. But, but there is a, there is, we are not all the same. You know, the Bible is very clear about that. We all have different gifts, and some of that's kind of how we're wired together. We're just not all the same. An artist and a CPA who, like, you know, they're just different, or at least they're operating from a different propensity. So that's a good thing. We don't want to all be the same. But if you are... It, let's say you're very, very artistic and big picture and creative. I know a lot of creatives with more talent than than a lot of very, very, very successful creatives even. But you're never heard of them because they can't get linear and focused and detailed enough like more of a J type would be to really take their talents and put them to any fruitful end. Like you still got to know what day it is. You got to, be able to, you know, organize yourself to, to find a calendar and show up or finish a project. And so a, I think it's great that you're learning your types and whatever these are and, and also using those to help understand each other. But at at the same time, you don't want to limit your personal growth. And Jung called it um, individuation, where you're becoming a whole person and integrating those different sides of who you are. You know, sometimes, for example, people are um, just intellectualizing stuff. You know, in therapy, we call it when they're, they're, they're not feeling their feelings. They're intellectualizing their feelings. So the feelings never get worked through. They're called intellectual defenses. Just want to explain it and analyze it and this and the other. And a good therapist will sit down and say, well, you know, why don't you just pause and go in here and tell me what you're feeling? And sometimes they'll look at you like, what are you talking about? Well, after more therapy, they learn to get in touch with their bodies and their and their feelings. I remember one time I was working with a, a group in a leadership scenario and, and, and there was this guy that was just so structured, so much closure and everything had to be wrapped up. And, but he was so controlling in the application on the Mars rings. He was a J right. And he was living out, you know, all of his 
Janus. <laughs> but he was driving everybody crazy in the way that that he executed that. And so, you know, they asked me if I could help with his interpersonal style, the way he was kind of over controlling and micromanaging and a bunch of stuff. And I remember him saying, well, I'm just a J. That's, you know, the, that's who I am. And that's the value I provide around here. And I said, yeah, but dude, you, you wear your Janus like a badge. And you got to get in touch with, you know, some of the abilities inside to kind of loosen up a little bit and give some, uh, get, have more flexibility and a little more open-ended with some people. And, you know, some, you know, the, the violin thing is strung too tight. I and mean, you don't want to so loose that it falls off of the instrument, but it's going to make the right kind of notes when you use the, the, the structure of who you are to hold it together well, but not so tight that you're driving everybody nuts. So personality types are great. Um, they are uh, so helpful in observing yourselves and to talk to each other and understand each other. But at the same time, ask yourself, what is the opposite of that particular scale for me? You know, if I'm a T, what does it look like for me to look more at my F, my feelings? If I'm an introvert, what would it mean? Is that isolating me in some way? And also, is some of my introversion coming from what I'm calling that? Maybe that I've got, you know, a wee bit of um, social anxiety, and I'm kind of avoid um you know, avoiding connection and intimacy and relationships with people. Now, the truth is, true introverts, um, and and this is some of the the great work um, of uh, that came out of the book Quiet. Um, see, introverts, some some people think they don't need people. That's just not true. There's no such thing as a human that doesn't need people. And they don't need a relationship. They gain their energy from being alone. Well, they experience themselves, you know, when they're alone because they, their brain gets overstimulated by too many, you know, moving parts around them. But the um, reality is that they need people. They just need less people. <laughs> and they even can go um, deeper you know, than sometimes the shallow extroverts. And you say to the to the um to the um shallow extroverts, shallow I mean I don't mean that pejorative way, but you know, if you got I give my energy I'd like to go to parties. Well you talk to 50 people at a party and oh wasn't that great. But they didn't go deep with anybody. And it's great if you're an extrovert if you can still sit down with one person and go deep. So that's kind of what I want you to look at if you're into personality types. There's a lot of big ones out there. Um, a lot of people are into them. Just don't use them as an excuse. That's what I want you to think about.